Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab presentation special. I'm here with Paul Maddox from Modal and also Luca. Uh, and what we've got here is, well, we've seen it, but it's sort of been, it's gone a bit under the radar. It's the 001, yep, right? It's the 001. Yep, it's the baby brother to the 002. It's two voices of a 002 in a little box. So not monophonic. It's not monophonic, proper duophonic, two voices. And is the voice architecture the same? Yep, it's identical, so it's patch compatible with 002 as well. So that's the NCOs uh, and wavetable and also the uh, analog filters? Yep, so we've got the same transistor analog filters in them, same uh, analog VCAs, and yes, the two NCOs per voice. So that's a pair of analog filters? Yep, right. a pair of analog filters, a pair of VCAs, and four oscillators. So um, obviously there's a smaller footprint to this, it's actually more of a kind of classic mono styling. Yes. Uh, when we haven't got animator and sequencer, or it doesn't look like we have. Yes, we have. We've got the animator in here. We've got the sequencer. Um, it's two-part multi-timbral, so we've got two tracks of sequencer. Um, whereas with 002, of course, you've got 12 tracks. So what, what, what led you to kind of go down this route? Well, we wanted to make our product a little more accessible to a lot a wider market and to a lot more people. Um, and we also had a few people asking for some extra features, which we couldn't put into 002 because obviously we'd already gone into production and launched it. So we've added a, a couple of extra twists to this one. So um, we've got the same large uh, LCD, uh, the same, exactly the same voice architecture. Just quickly run us through that again. Yep. Yeah, so we've got two oscillators. Each oscillator has 56 waveforms plus pulse width. Um, we've got a, a four input mixer, sorry, five input mixer because we've got external audio in as well. Right. Uh, you can overdrive that into the VCF, which is a classic transistor ladder filter. We've got two envelopes, one for the VCF, one for the VCA. We've got two LFOs, the animator, the sequencer, and all the same modulation routings you get with a 002. Right, okay. So, and also notice uh, on the back here, we've got a bunch of CVIO, haven't we? So yep, so this was one of the things people wanted. So on the back here, we've got four CV ins and four CV outs. Okay, we better have a listen to some stuff. What's the, uh, where, does it, where does it lie, do you think? Where's it sort of strange? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing bass, obviously. Bass is an obvious win for this. Um, because of the transistor ladder filter and the, the big fat sounding oscillators we've got, it does sound quite huge and immense at the bottom end. Is this a single oscillator? This is one oscillator with a sawtooth and a little bit of sub. And is there much going on in terms of the drive? There's a little bit of overdrive just to give it a bit of a push and clip it a little bit, give it you a character You can give it even more. You can give it a load more drive and just, yeah, turn it really nasty. So um, coming back to the filter, is it a, it's a low pass filter or is there multi-mode to it? So it's a low pass filter, but like 002, we've got the ability to sweep from a four pole low pass through to a band pass through to a one pole and anywhere in between. So you give, this is a one pole, this is a four pole. So if the bottom end of the four pole is a bit too big, you can just roll it off a little bit and it sits in the mix a little bit easier. Right, gotcha. Maybe we could have a listen to a few more sounds then. Yeah. So is that the sequence or the arpeggiator going on there? That is the arpeggiator running yeah. on this. So we've got the same arpeggiator as 002, 008, it's the same across the whole family. And is that, what kind of filter was that? I, heard, so I, that, I could see on the screen though that it was less than four pole, but I couldn't. Yeah, we were sweeping from four pole through to a band pass and through to a one pole. So that's your typical band pass type filter. And that's a one pole, which gives you a nice bright fizzy edge. So this is duophonic. Yep. Well, obviously, does that mean we can stack the oscillators up and get yep. a bit of... You can stack the two voices just the same as you can with 002. So you can get truly monster sounds out of it. So that's the unison. Yep. That's Polly. And Polly. So now, that, so Polly, presumably, you can, now you can hit two voices. And I guess a lot of mono synths, but certainly with more than one oscillator, sinks, sync sounds. What yeah, have we got in we, that? We can do big fat sync sounds. Um, there's one in here somewhere. Yeah, sync sounds are not a problem. The other thing is, obviously, programming the sequencer and the arpeggiator without the dedicated knobs of the 002, mm -hmm. how does that work then? Well, on 001, we've been a little bit clever with the user interface. We didn't have a lot of panel space left. So what we've done is the ADSR envelopes, you can flip them into sequencer mode. 
and now you can control the sequencer from them. So you've got eight steps of sequencer there. Right, okay. So it's, it's a bit of a compromise, but we wanted to keep the form factor down to sort of three octaves. And of course we can control external CV gate. We've got something hooked up here, haven't we? We've got the yep, uh, we have. little dark energy hooked up uh, via CV and gate. Uh, and that, and obviously that's uh, volt octave. Yep. Does it do multi-standards? At the moment it does volts per octave because that's the most common standard. Um, but we are working on some software where we'll be able to add hertz per volt and all the other bits and pieces. So, And we've got four, is it four channels of CV? It's four channels of CV and you can assign them to pretty much anything. So you can have, um, in this, uh, we've got CV and gate out for note and for gating. Uh, you can route the aftertouch, the LFO from LFO1 internally, the filter cut off. Well, so joystick got, modulation. Here. If I turn this up. Yep. So now we're playing just the dark energy. I'll yep. prove it. Yep. That's me. Yep. So that's the 001 playing and triggering the dark energy. And what about coming back? Because we've got CV inputs as yep, well. Yeah, we've got four CV ins and they can control pretty much any parameter on the 001. Oh right, so full full integration. So yeah, with... that's it, exactly, yeah. And um, we can take the LFO from the dark energy here. Is this what we have here? Yeah, and bring it in and have it control in the filter cutoff. Right, okay, gotcha. So was that the idea with this then, to sort of try and bring the two worlds together? Because, I mean, we haven't got CV in on the 002, right? No, we didn't have CV in on the 002. It was something that a lot of people asked for. A lot of the modular people don't have an easy way of controlling it from a keyboard. Oh, I don't have a sequencer or an arpeggiator. And 001 can provide all of those for the modular fanatics. So I guess we should hear a little bit of uh, action with the sequencer and some other sort of sounds, because obviously we've only heard a couple of basses and sequencer. Yeah, let's have some more right? sounds. And, yeah. I guess you've got, because you've got the, di the, the digital tombers going through the analog filter, it can really warm things up as well. Yeah, it gives it a nice warmth and a nice edge. Has it got the same, um, the sub-oscillator? Because I know on the 002 you've got the, I've forgotten what the f feature's called now. We but... call it a sub-wave, yeah. Basically, exactly the same, so we can have the uh, sub-oscillator track the main oscillator waveform. So you can have a sawtooth on both, or you can have a saw on a traditional square if you don't want that right. feature. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a square underneath, and then it's got the same sort of vocal style. Right, right, okay, gotcha. So this looks like a very similar operating system to what's going on in the 002 and to some extent the 008. I mean, is that is that the, the idea to have this kind of parity across Yeah, them? we've got a base operating system that provides the same functionality across all of our products. So 002, 001, 002R and 008 have the same core features. So we've got the sequencer, the animator, the arpeggiator, um, all the updates from the internet, and all those good things. Right, so th th again, this is cloud enabled, and you yep. stick you stick an Ethernet cable in it, basically. You stick an it? Ethernet cable in it, and you can connect it to the cloud. You can download updates, and yeah, it's a lot simpler than messing around with SysX or custom USB drivers. Just a couple of buttons, and you're off. So I'm keen to take a, a, a bit more look at the sequencer and the way that it can interact with external gear. Uh, how many tracks is the sequencer in this? This is two track sequencer because it's got two part multi timbre. Okay, so if you wanted to run external voices, it would be in in tandem with an internal voice effectively. Yeah, I mean, you can disable one of the internal voices and just have the, the sequencer controlling ah. one of the external ones. Ah, so you, could you still have the keyboard playing the, the voice? Right, yeah. so you, oh, right, okay. Yeah, I so you could it. have a sound played on the keyboard while the sequencer's playing your external. So we got something we can, uh, we can fire up here, Luca, just to... So we've got one voice that's playing this sort of arpeggio and one that's doing a hard sync sound. We can now do is control the external little dope for okay, dark energy thing from one channel of the sequencer and still play the voices in the 001. So presumably we can also send out other parameters from LFOs, what have you, into the dope for via the other CV channels, right? Yeah, I mean, we can send out um, LFO, we can send out joystick, knobs, a uh, whole variety of things. So at this example, we've got LFO1 routed to the filter cutoff on the dark energy. Right, and that's just coming in. Yep. Okay. So are you finding that people are using it as an integration between the system? Because we've got an external audio input as well, so you can bring everything, make it kind of quite integrated, yeah? Yeah, I mean, that, that was the, the whole idea behind it. We've got 
two external audio ins that bring in the external audio into the, the mixer so it's pre-filtered. So you can use the filter. And of course, if you've got the modular as well, you can then use the modular to control the filter that's in the 002. So we've tried to give you a bit of everything and make it, you know, hopefully like having a whole bunch of extra modules in your modular. So I'm guessing with, like I say, with less controls on the front panel, it's where the sort of web inter interface and the network interface starts to come into play, right? Yeah, certainly. I mean, this, this shares the same OS as all the others. So we have got the web interface on here, which we can, we can show you a little bit of. Great, let's have a look. You can grab your uh, laptop. So Luke has got the MacBook Air, and that's running a web browser, right? So this is an HTML5 editor. Yep. So we're getting at this via Ethernet, and it's just getting an IP from a router. That's correct, yeah. So then from the, the web browser, you can edit the whole synthesizer, the sequence of the patch, um, everything you want to do with it. Right, okay, so we've got another sound up here. Yep. And uh, Luke is now gonna show the uh, sequencer. So presumably, because we've got a larger screen real estate, the editing the sequencer makes it... It suddenly becomes a lot easier when you can see, you know, all the, all the rows and all the columns and everything at the same time. Um, you've got a keyboard for entering the notes. You can see the step lengths and the velocities and everything. It suddenly becomes a lot easier. So how many channels is the sequencer? We've got two tracks, but how many channels? So, so each sequencer has 12 what we call rows. And a row can be a note, it can be a parameter on the synth, like a, a waveform, a filter cut oh, good off. Lord, that's the matrix that we're seeing there. Yeah. And the, right. There okay. you go. So you can pick any of the parameters. So, yeah. It, it, but it, I, I mean, that makes it a lot easier to use that it's way. It's an awful lot easier to use on the web page. So presumably this could run just off a tablet or... A... Yeah, we, we've had this running on iPads. Yeah, um, commonly at trade shows and things we use an iPad. Most people have got a door in their studio, so they've got a nice big screen that they can open up with a, an editor. And what about patch editing? You can do with that as well? Yeah. Because uh, I've got a challenge, obviously. You know, I'm a fan of pulse width modulation. I would like to see a nice pulse width, fat pulse width modulation type sound, please. Okay. Well, if we get Luca to load a, a basic sound, we'll start with single sine wave, single oscillator, turn on the pulse width and just adjust it a little bit. And then we will turn on the LFO. So now we've got the LFO routed to the wave, which you can see here the little lights come on right. the front panel. And what we need to do now is turn up the depth of the LFO. There you go. Okay, so that needs to go down an octave and slow down the LFO as well, I think so. There we go. Slow it down a little bit. So okay. Single oscillator, so you want, you want a sub oscillator in there? Yeah, let's see how low can we go. Let's have a sub oscillator in there. Let's turn on the so that, that's as well. only using one oscillator. That's one oscillator, or one with, voice, one oscillator, one voice with the sub wave. Uh, we'll turn the sub wave on. So now the sub oscillator is PWAing at the same rate as the primary oscillator. Okay, nice. Um, am I right in thinking this has got aftertouch as well? Yeah, we got aftertouch on the keyboard, so we can route that to a number of things. Um, probably the most common one, of course, is the filter cut off. <laughs> So let's add some drive and uh, nasty it up a bit then. Ooh. There you go. Just a bit. <laughs> okay. So, and presumably again, you know, if we were to sequence that, we could sequence just that line and yep. then we could add the, uh, add another line on top. And is yep. that where that with, with this, the sequencer becomes, as we've seen, it becomes a lot clearer. I'm also interested in the animator. Presumably that's an easier thing to kind of visualize. Again, yeah, it's a lot easier on the, on the um, graphical interface because you've got more space than you've got with a single panel with knobs and a display. The display is great and it's big, but you cannot beat having a large amount of real estate for something that's as complicated as an animation. So once again, the animator, how many, so explain to me how the matrix works, because it's so a So basically we've got a 32 step step sequencer. Each step can have a different length. Um, it's also MIDI syncable. And then you have 12 rows underneath that again. And the rows can be um, parameters, so filter cutoff, waveform, LFO rates, right. uh, envelope depths, de res I buttons. guess we better have a, uh, a, a, a nice animator example at this point. Yeah. There you go. Can you slew between the steps as well to kind of create a little more? That's a feature that a lot of people have requested, and it's one we're currently working on implementing. So, yeah, that's coming. So have you got any sort of pre-programmed uh, fancy, uh, fancy uh, animator patches as well? Yep. So here we've got a, a very simple sort of bottly type sound. And what we've done is uh, enable the 
animator to control the filter cutoff and the wave of oscillator one. So we've got an animator per voice, is that how Correct. it works? Correct, yeah, it's an animator per voice. So if you play the two notes at the same time, they start in sync. If you roll them, they start one behind the other. And presumably in your, because you've got a performance mode in this thing as well, where you can have completely different voices for different notes as well. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Does so that you work? Do a keyboard does that, split, does that work, yeah. work in splits? Yeah, and you layers can do a keyboard and... split and have a bass and an animator sound at the top, or a bass and a lead, or whichever way around you want it. Right. Okay. So we've got another patch here, which is using the split. Yep. So duo timbrality, so we've got two sounds, yep. and the arpeggiator, and the... And so we've got the sequencer on, right. the, on the sort of left-hand bass part, and we've got an animator playing on the top part. Right. That's the sequencer playing the sort of left-hand, as it were. And then the animator is that sequencing. Yeah, those it's changing, it sounds like it's changing waveform and filter cuts off again. But we can also transpose things on the fly as we go as well. And I could, can I turn this up? Maybe? Yeah, go for it. I've lost the tuning on my analog, but that's okay. Right, I'll take that down again. But So that's yeah. also drives right. Um, okay, so the 001 is significantly less expensive than 002. Yep. I mean, have you had to cut corners in construction and have we got the same basic components? Or what's the? We've got the same components internally and we, we keep the same level of high quality parts internally and externally as well. We've still got leather on the sides, we've still got a 1.6 millimeter case, the turned down aluminium knobs and the high quality encoders. We, we wanted to bring it into a, a better price point for people, but we didn't want to compromise on the quality. So these are available now? Yep, they've been available for about four or five weeks. And what sort of pricing are we talking about? So these are 1350 plus VAT, which in the UK is about 1620 pounds. Uh, and in America, I think there's sort of $5 short of $2,000. Right, okay. Um, so I think you're gonna play us out with a couple more sounds. Uh, but before we go, I wanna say thank you very much, Paul and Luca, for coming to show us the 001. Uh, it's been interesting to see, because like I said, it's sort of slipped under the radar it's, a little it's bit. It's slipped under the radar a little bit, yeah, so it's great to give it a bit of an airing. Right. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We've got lots of great more content coming up. Take it away.